into the small school news for tonight. I alluded to it earlier. Division II football. Potentially a big change coming in the way that we operate our playoff format. This is the tweet that I saw that kind of sparked uh, this conversation for me. And, uh, you know, Commissioner over there at MIAA, he tweets, and oh my gosh, the text is so small. I have to pull it up on uh, on my separate screen over here because I can't even read it. But you guys can hopefully see that. Hold on. Let me do a little zoom job. There we go. There we go. Figured it out. Figured it out. All right. Mike Racy, the commissioner over there at uh, the MIAA, he says, uh, it's a quote from D2. He's just aggregating here. The D2 Championships Committee is recommending the Management Council eliminate bylaw 18.4.3.1. <laughs> which requires sport committees to pair teams strictly within their region. I'm going to say that again. Which requires teams strictly, or committees to pair teams strictly within their region as the group works to enhance regionalization bracketing model. Hello. That would be very big news. He says, this is great progress and a hopeful sign to a better selection process and bracketing system for future D2 championships. Hell yeah, it is, Mike. And I've appreciated, for one, Mike's transparency, not on this, but just everything when it comes to his position and uh, kind of the things he hears. Um, he's not obviously like, there's no insider scoops. But what he does, he doesn't gatekeep any of this information. He's out there. He's very transparent with this stuff. I appreciate the hell out of it because then I get to talk about it on this particular show. So for a lot of people, they might wonder, what I'm talking about, most people understand, right? Uh, Division two football, you go into super regions. So in Division two football, it's not like just the top four teams in the country. Or in this case, the top, it would be what? 28 teams in the country just make the playoffs. I know, that seems way too simple. Not how it works. The top seven teams in each super region make the playoffs. So if teams, want, if, they, if they say, this will never happen, but see, for, this, for the sake of example, the top 10 teams in the country are all in super region number one. Guess what? Only the top seven are making it to the playoffs. No excuses, no exceptions. That's bullshit. This was the uh, this was the bracket for last year's uh, playoff, national playoff, if you will. And um, this just kind of shows you at least what the current model is kind of like. There's Super Region 1, Super Region 3 on the right, and then down here, Super Region uh, 2 and 4, respectively, uh, taking a look at that and the runs. Obviously, Harding uh, finishing up, cleaning up house there with the national championship game. But when you look at this, what jumps out to you? Right? What jumps out at you? And I'm going to pull up the uh, final AFCA rankings. That's the American Football Coaches Association. They do uh, some pretty accredited rankings for Division II football. We're going to pull up the final rankings from D2 football. And again, I've talked about this before. No one's going to be surprised by this. Let's look at Super Region 3. Okay? And I'm going down the AFCA rankings while I'm looking at this. Number one in the final rankings, obviously, Harding, Super Region 3. Okay, number two, School of Mines, Super Region 4. They played in the championship. Deserved. But then you go down, number three, GVSU, number five, Pittsburgh State, number six, Central Missouri, number nine, Ferris. And now we've just gone down this list where you have one, two, three, four, five of the top 10 teams in the country are in Super Region 3. And yes, they all made the playoffs, thankfully, but now you're talking about the teams in Super Region 3 that are just off the cuff. Teams like Davenport or teams like, you know, whoever else. I can make that argument, right? And uh, it's frustrating. And so now you say, okay, you know, there was some news that came out semi-recently that there was potential for new super regions. And I'll show you guys the proposed new layout that is supposed to be taking place in 2025. This is a look from uh, Reddit College Football here. And you'll see it, what it doesn't do is abolish the super region system. It's just changing the conferences that coincide with each super region. So now, instead of Super Region 3 having the Great American Conference and the MIAA, they bring in the GMAC and the NSIC, which are the teams in the green, for those of you looking at the map on YouTube right now watching this episode, right? And... Um, this map, the thing they try to do here, I'll show, I'll show you this map, and then this next map I'm going to show you is, you can see it in the bottom right, this is the model that's been used since 2017, and I, you can see that green region is like, what, like what is going on here? I don't know if how much geographical sense that actually makes, and then we've got a blue dot all the way in that sea of orange dot, it's just an interesting kind of situation we have here, so I think their updated model is just trying to fit more of an actual geographic landscape, and they've done a better job, honestly, they have done a better job, it makes sense geographically, the system still sucks. So, you know, Kobe, that they fixed the geographic problem, what's the issue with this? 
the issue has nothing to do with geography, everything to do with the system. But just to, to put out right a great example of this, look at Super Region number four, right? The gray teams, all the ones all the way on the left. Conference isn't there. Great American Conference, Lone Star Conference, MIAA, and the RMAC. What jumps out right away? Great American Conference, Harding, RMAC, Mines. That was your national championship game this year. With these super regions adopted, right? With those super regions adopted, if we go back to uh, this year's bracket from this past year, that was super region, which one was it? That was Super Region 4, so you'd be down here in the right corner. Mines is already in there. So say they are the 1 and 2 seeds in that Super Region. They're going to meet at the latest, at the latest in the quarterfinals. That would be a quarterfinal matchup. So it was a championship game that given those circumstances that were supposed to be implemented or are supposed to be implemented in uh, 2025, I do believe, because Coastal Carolina is coming in as a conference, a whole nother conversation. That now would be just a quarterfinal game. That 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 everything that is wrong with Division Two football playoffs. So this news, going back to the original kind of note here from Mike about the NCAA, I'll have you guys just uh, take a read on this one one more time. They've recommended that they eliminate that bylaw, which is requiring them to schedule within these regions and could open up the bracket to all kinds of new possibilities and to more just making sense, if we're being honest here. So that is really big news for Division II football. I wanted to cover that because it's something I've talked about a lot in this show, and I think that would be a great addition to the sport.